and I want to welcome you all to the Arnett uh, Researcher Talks, um, our winter series. My name is Karina Kemp and I'm the Director of eResearch and I'm, in, I'm, I'm joined uh, by my colleague Dr Sarah King and a few other Arnett colleagues as well in the eResearch team present. Um, Sarah is going to assist me with some of the technology and answering questions in the back end and things like that. Um, I want to start with the acknowledgement of country. In the spirit of reconciliation, Arnett acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders, past, present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people today. Okay, so thank you for joining us. This is, um, this is really exciting. Um, I'm really enjoying these researcher talks because it's not about Arnett talking about what we're doing, it's about finding out um, all the cool things that researchers are doing are using um, Cloud Store and associated services within that. Um, today, we've got Dr. Stefan Bowman, who's a research fellow at the University of Queensland in the School of Information Technology and Electrical Engineering. And uh, Stefan's an interesting one because uh, he uh, put out a blog on um, how he was using Cloud Store and connecting it uh, through to uh, some of his repositories and, and external services he's gonna talk about today. And so I reached out to him, I think it was around Christmas time, um, and it was really interesting to hear what he had, what he had to say. So um, if anyone's doing anything with interesting in Cloud Store, make sure you, um, you know, add Arnett or the hashtag Cloud Store and anything you're tweeting about, um, because we do watch that and, and we'll reach out or you can just reach out to us anyway. We'll put our um, details at the end uh, of the talk that you can grab them. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Stefan. Um, but before I do, um, this is going to be pretty informal. So please ask any questions throughout um, the talk. We're going to be monitoring the chat as well. Um, so if you want to just chuck it in the chat or come off mute and have a say. Uh, Stefan wants to keep it pretty informal today. Over to you, Stefan. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. Can you see my slides and can you hear me? Yeah, fantastic. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you for the kind introduction. Um, we already saw a few great talks in this series and where people showed how to use Cloud Store and Swan Notebooks and um, how it can be used in research applications. So I want today build on these previous talks and show how to connect Cloud Store to various external services. So leaving a little bit the Cloud Store uh, ecosystem, but not too much, I promise. Um, so uh, before I get started, uh, please say hi in the chat where you're from. I already see a couple of familiar faces and on which country you're situated on, uh, because I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I'm situated on, which for me here in St. Lucia are the Turabo and the Jagara people. And I acknowledge the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands and I pay respect to their ancestors and their descendants. Uh, so I already see a couple of people uh, from Brisbane as well. That's great. Um, Okay, so today I want to show how to connect uh, Cloud Store to various external services uh, and potentially enable new workflows that maybe people haven't heard about yet. Um, and I will show a couple of examples and I hope that these examples um, are a good baseline to extrapolate that also to other services out there because uh, you will see that there are some a couple of commonalities there that you might be able to apply uh, to your own problems and your own use cases. So to get started, let's quickly look uh, behind the scenes to understand a little bit how Cloud Store works, what it is and what it makes so cool that we can connect it to our services. So there are, there are two things today that are really important in this talk. And uh, if there's nothing else you understand from the rest of the talk, these are the two things uh, the take home messages. So I thought I'd start there. Uh, because very often when I explain Cloud Store to people, uh, people are a little bit confused. So they say, okay, what, what is it? Uh, is it like Dropbox? And the answer is yes. Um, Cloud Store is like Google Drive, like OneDrive, like Dropbox, but it's provided by Arnet. So it's a, it's a cloud storage service. Um, however, Arnet didn't reinvent the wheel. So they didn't implement their own storage solution there, but they actually used an open source project. And this open source project is called OwnCloud. And you might have heard of, of another open source project, which is called NextCloud. Um, so basically, Cloud Store is Arnet's hosted version of OwnCloud. And that's why uh, first message is Cloud Store is based on our cloud. And we basically get uh, one terabyte of storage uh, for researchers in Australia. Um, and another important thing that comes with this is that own cloud supports web dev. And you might have seen web dev in applications you're using and you might even know what it is. Um, it's 
an extension of the uh, HTTP protocol, uh, and it means web distributed authoring and versioning. And it basically is a protocol for creating, changing, and moving documents on a server. So it's basically an, a protocol that tells us or that, that lets us change files on remote servers via a web protocol. Um, and again, the take home message here is if you want to connect cloud store to other services, always remember it's basically on cloud and we have web dev. So um, this is the baseline. Let's look at some examples. So I picked a very simple example first that might be already useful to a couple of people. So Sotero is a free and easy to use uh, tool to help collect, organize, cite, and share research. So basically I use it to manage all my publications, all my books that, I, that I'm reading. And uh, you see I have about three and a half thousand uh, publications in my database. And it's really a, a really great knowledge uh, management system for researchers. So it also keeps the PDFs. Uh, and um, if, you, if you can think about three and a half thousand PDFs times 10 megabyte per PDF, this is a substantial amount of storage that you need in the background to sync that across multiple devices. Um, so now it's a really, really bad idea to directly uh, add this Sotero library to the own cloud client directly. So uh, never do that. Um, don't put your um, Sotero working directory in there because it has a database file, an SQLite file. And this SQLite file uh, gets changed uh, in very small increments and the uh, own cloud client will start syncing it and will sooner or later corrupt that file. So you will end up with a broken database. So uh, a big no for that. So how do you then sync your Sotero library Right, library across multiple devices. Well, there is a syncing service that Sotero implements. Now, the problem is the free service only gives you 300 megabyte, so around 30 papers, which is not a lot. So you can just pay $120 per year, or you could use Cloud Store. Um, so how does this work? Uh, we can simply set a sync up in the Sotero preferences and uh, what we need is, and I will show how to do this uh, in, a, in a later example that's a little bit more complex, uh, we need to generate an app password and we get a username and a password token that we can then fill in into this Sotero um, settings. So there is a web dev uh, module that you can select. Um, so you simply add this cloudstore.arnold at your AU um, address here with web dev and then slash Sotero, uh, the username and the password that we got from here. And when you click verify server, uh, it sometimes tells you that it didn't work, right? but when you click OK, it actually works. So um, that's, that's really cool. And now um, all of our publications are uh, zipped up with a property file and they will all end up on Cloud Store. And now they sync without any problems, without corruption of databases across all the computers you have and also uh, the iPad app. And you can just read your publications um, everywhere which is really uh, cool. And was for me, was a, was a game changer because that was, was a problem in the beginning uh, with, with using Sotero. Um, okay, so let's come to a little bit more complex example. Um, and again, we will use web dev and um, I will show a little bit uh, what I do there and uh, what our options are. So we already heard in the last talks that there is a really cool tool in Cloudster called File Sender. So if you just need to send files to people, uh, just, just do that, it's really cool. Also, you can create a public link, uh, and I'm sure most people use that already. Uh, you just go to a file, create a public link, you copy um, this, this sharing link, uh, you can also password protect it, and you can send it out via email or via chat, um, and it gets to people. Um, the thing is for longer term collaboration. So let's say you don't just want to share a single file, but whole directories and people should upload data and download data. Then there is also an option of adding external collaborators to an account uh, if you have a group drive. Um, and that, that might also be a really cool option for you. So today, however, I want to show a slightly different option and it involves an external service. Um, the external service is called the Open Science Foundation. And the Open Science Foundation is a free open platform to support research and enable collaboration. And it basically originated from uh, this whole reproducibility crisis that we have in the neuroimaging space. So Brian Nosek, who uh, did a lot in this space, uh, said, well, we need to change that. We need to change practice of, of researchers worldwide. We need to enable them to, to share their data, to collaborate with people all over the world. Let's build something um, that's, that's designed for that. So what they did is they built an online service that connects 
all different, all kinds of different services. So here, for example, Sotero, OwnCloud, OneDrive, Mendeley, Google Drive, GitLab, GitHub, um, lots of different services all under one interface. So you can all link them up. Um, and OSF then will take care of archiving this data, uh, versioning this data, and um, connecting this. So I want to show how we can combine that with, with Cloud Store. So now, this is the, the most dangerous part of this whole presentation. I will, I will attempt to do a live presentation. And usually this looks like people are not very well prepared and I'm sure everything will go wrong, but I will try my best. So um, if you want to know more about this, I wrote a blog post about this um, in, in January. So there's, there's a lot more details there, but I, I try to show that uh, live. So let's get started and let's go to our um, uh, cloud store. Okay. I will start really in the absolute uh, beginning. I will just create a new directory here, um, on a talk. And let's say this is a project that we're currently running. And I would like to share this with a collaborator that's actually not even in Australia. So it's, it would be quite difficult to add this collaborator to this, uh, to this project. Um, so I will just add a couple of files in here that I prepared earlier. Um, so you could also use uh, the local sync client, uh, but here I just used uh, a couple of little, uh, little documents. And um, just to show there, the other option would be to go uh, via the local sync client, and then you will see the, the files will soon uh, appear here as well. So it's basically, um, yeah, it's basically all nicely connected. Um, good. So. Now let's see how we can connect our cloud store uh, directory to the Open Science Foundation. Okay, so these files are uploaded and then uh, in a few seconds, these should appear here as well. So what we have to do is um, we have to create an account at the Open Science Foundation. So the Open Science Foundation um, doesn't need an institutional account. So you can do this with your private Gmail account. You can do it with an ORCID account. Uh, it really stays with you for your whole research career, which is a, which is a problem uh, that I had. I changed institutions a couple of times. So it was always really annoying that I lost access to all my data and all my sharing capabilities. So I needed something that stays across institutions. And that's where I always have really filled a big, uh, big hole. Um, and now when you look in this, in this list, um, when we go to settings, um, configure add-on accounts. And you can see there that there is a lot of uh, different accounts. So it supports Amazon S3, Bitbucket, Box, uh, Dataverse, so different uh, Dropbox, different data sharing services, um, GitHub, GitLab. And you will see there is no Cloud Store in this list. And the reason is that um, Cloud Store is, is a name that Arnett gave it. And in the end, it's own cloud. So that comes back to my first slide. So we want to link our own cloud to, uh, to this. So what we need to do is um, we need to link, uh, and again, uh, only on cloud instance supporting web dev. Uh, and OCS 1.3 are supported. So luckily, our Cloud Store instance supports WebDev. So we can uh, put the link to Cloud Store Arnet Plus in here. Uh, and now we need a username and password. And now I highly recommend not to use your username and your real password for um, Cloud Store because if one service gets compromised and, or gets hacked, we always have to assume that our password uh, will be will end up in a database somewhere. So never use uh, your real database there. Always use tokens that you can revoke. So I want to quickly show how to create this. Um, for this, I just make that full screen so we can nicely see that. So what I would recommend is go to settings in your Cloud Store account, and then um, don't use your normal sync password, but rather set an app password instead. So when you go to security, you will see that I use this quite a lot. So basically for every different tool I connect to Cloud Store, I have my own token. Uh, the good thing is that I can revoke that token. So in case Sotero gets compromised, then I can just revoke the token for Sotero and my account is still secure and I can reinitiate and can recreate a new token. So let's create uh, an OSF, um, and I have to be careful because I have a real OSF token that I am um, not over right now. So uh, I just call it OSF uh, webinar Arnet token. So I can really be quite specific there. Now this, um, this password, and I will delete this in a second. So this password will give you access to my account. So basically this, uh, this little uh, string is what we need and what we paste into the password here. So if we do this, um, 
then what happens is own cloud is now connected uh, to the OSF. And now we can create a new project on the OSF and we can give this project access to our cloud store. So let's do this. Let's create a new project. And we call that Arnet Webinar. Um, and also our, uh, cloud store, um, so cloud store is, will be linked and will be the storage backend, but OSF also has its own uh, storage. So it gives you five gigabyte for private projects and 50 gigabyte for public projects. Um, so that's why I use cloud store there because my data is larger than 50 gigabyte. So I, almost, yeah, I need cloud store uh, basically to publish my data there. So let's go to this new project. Now, here you see there's OSF storage. So we're not trying to use this today. We're trying to link that up with Cloud Store. So for this, we have to go to the add-ons. And now we have to enable this own cloud add-on. And enabling it, it will now tell us that this project now gets access to our own cloud uh, account, which is our Cloud Store account. Okay. So now it will ask us to import this account from the profile. So we will do this. We import, and I'll just enlarge this a little bit. And now it will ask us, which directory do you want to give access to? So here I will just say, I just want my Rnet talk uh, as a directory. And I'll save that. Okay, fantastic. Theoretically, if I now click on files, I should see in a second, my files that I just uploaded in Cloud Store in uh, this OSF account. And now we see that here. This is the file I just uploaded. And now something really cool happened. Um, I shared my credentials. Oh, of course, it's a live demo, um, so something went wrong. But um, what should have happened is I should have been able to click on this and I should have showed the file. Uh, we'll try that in a second again. But the cool thing is um, the, the credentials for Cloud Store, are, I don't have to share them now with my collaborator. And what I can now do is I can either make that whole project public. So for example, I could switch that to a public project and then everyone in the world without authenticating would be able to see these files, which is really cool if you want to share it publicly uh, in a paper. But before I do this, I just want to invite a collaborator who's not in Australia. So let's see how this would work. So um, I will try to show this here. Um, so um, what we want is, um, now it's contributors. Sorry, wrong, wrong link. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to add a contributor. So now I will use my wife's account um, just as a test case so you can see how this looks like. Um, and my wife is also a researcher and I'm collaborating with her. So this is actually a real workflow. Um, and I will give her read, write access and um, also show her as a contributor to this project. But let's assume that my wife wouldn't be in Australia and wouldn't have a cloud store account. Um, okay, so now she got an invite, read and write. And what I will now do is I um, have my browser on the left. So this is me. And I will have my wife's account on the right. So if I now go in my projects, I should see that, I, uh, that my wife, so this is my wife's account, was now added to this project. So let's see if this works. OK, so here is an Arnet webinar. Um, and the great thing now about this is she can see the files that I created in my Cloud Store account without sharing my Cloud Store credentials uh, with my collaborator. And she can also add things to this. So she can um, also add files to there and we can now really uh, collaborate on this. And when we're done, we can, we can share the data uh, with the rest of the world. Okay. so. I'll go back to my slides and um, I will share the slides later, but basically everything that I just showed in the live screen uh, will be in the slides and I explain a little bit uh, what, what we've done there. Um, cool. Now let's go. Uh, does anything your collaborator adds to go back into, into Cloud Store? Yes, it does. So I can quickly show that. Um, let's, let's do this. 
Um, so here I go to files and here it is. Okay, yes. Okay, upload. And I'll just grab another file. Um, and now my wife is uploading uh, this file into her cloud store, into her OSF account. This will directly link via WebDev to cloud store. And uh, I'm hoping that this even works. So let's see. So it's uploaded. And now there should be a PDF file. So if I go here to my file section in my OSF account, let's see. Files. It should show up here. Okay, there's the PDF. And we also see, if I just make that larger, uh, we can also see who uploaded it and there will also be uh, versions of these files. So as soon as things, people are overwriting these things, uh, it manages this nicely. And when we go back to CloudStorm and go to files, then this should work as well. So let's go to the Arnett talk here and there should be a third file in there which was uploaded by someone who doesn't have my credentials, which is super cool. Okay. So um, let's go back and let's extend that a little bit. Um, just one more question there. Um, and that would include edits made in OSF2, I guess. Yes, uh, yes, Katrina. Um, yes, so everything that's, um, that's made there will be synced back and forth because basically OSF is using Cloud Store as their storage engine belief. So yes, it will be directly linked up. Um, cool. So now, why, why is this so useful? So I think this will hopefully come uh, even clearer now in the next slide, publishing data. And this is now a problem that, that I actually had and where, again, an external service helped me a lot solving that. So usually I, I, I share my data and my code in, in my paper. So I have a data availability statement at the end of my paper. And there I say, well, all data and code used in this paper can be found here. So now, is it a good idea to simply use a public link from to Cloud Store and put that in the paper. And I thought, well, this is not a great idea. Well, first thing I thought, well, what happens if Cloud Store one day stops the service or renames the service or, or anything breaks the link? Maybe they're updating from own cloud current version to own cloud next version and this link doesn't work anymore. Well, then, then I'm, yeah, then I'm out of luck because then this is in the paper and I can't change the paper. Also, what happens when I leave my current institution? Um, and this, this can happen, uh, right? And I might not, I might, I might not even um, stay in an institution in Australia. I might move to, to the US. Um, and then I can't update this data anymore. And um, just, just one thing there, if people are wondering what happens to your data on Cloud Store when you leave your institution, um, the permissions are granted by our institutions. So once our institution terminates our uh, contracts, um, the access to our data to Cloud Store will be terminated as well. So we will not be able to change it, but Cloud Store is very kind and they will not delete the data. We just will not have access to it anymore. So this is, this is one real problem um, that I basically had in, in 2019 when I was in the US for one year. Um, so this means that, yeah, with this great flexibility of short contracts in the university sector, it actually makes it hard to maintain a project over multiple years. Um, okay, so another problem that I had is what happens if I find a bug in my code or in my data, which happens very often. Um, so I need to update this later, even past the publication stage. So how can I, how can I do this? So just to, to start there, there is a really cool recent addition to Cloud Store, which is called Cloud Store Collections. And it, it, it starts to solve this problem. Um, so Cloud Store Collections is uh, a service that takes data in your Cloud Store uh, account and it packages it into, a, a, into an archive. And Bagot is um, a standard that basically says, well, we take data, we take information about the data, so metadata, how the data was created, what's in it, and we also create checksums so we can be sure that this data can be restored later on in a multiple years of time. Um, and we package this all up so in a, in, a, in a format that's quite secure and can be unpacked in a few years. So they're not using uh, very proprietary uh, uh, standards there. So they're trying to use open standards uh, that are hopefully supported in a few years still. And then this package, can be shared with the library and a digital object identifier can be created to this. 
Uh, however, the problem is that currently there, there is no way of, of generating a DOI inside Cloud Store. So you have to then download the zip archive, go to your library, upload it, and create a DOI. And um, I, I tried that, uh, and I did this with the UQ library, so that worked quite well. But then I found another option, which again, the Open Science Foundation uh, has exactly that, and it did really what I, what I needed. Um, so one goal of this uh, foundation is to uh, publish data as well and create DOIs and make sure that this data is accessible in 50 years and more. And this, is, this was really convincing uh, to me. So this feature is hidden under a button called registrations. So when you're, when you're done with your, with your files, your correlation, and it's, it's part of a paper now, you just click on this registrations button. And this registrations button will almost do the same thing as Cloud Store Collections. It will go and it will collect first metadata from you. So it will ask you, what did you do with this data? Where is it published? What's in there? And you can really decide how much information you want to provide. So they have different templates uh, with different levels of granularity. Um, and then it goes and it collects the cloud store data and it puts it into an archive and it puts it into cold storage uh, and it will be there for the next 50 years. And it will guarantee that have a, um, they have a preservation fund that guarantees for 50 years plus to, to keep that data alive under their DOI. Um, and then this is, this is how it looks like in the end when you've done this. So you now get a unique digital object identifier and this identifier is guaranteed to be there for the next years and it will always link to this data. And the cool thing now is that, well, if Cloud Store uh, goes away or the, the link breaks, it doesn't matter because now it's basically registered and it's stored in, in this uh, archive and it has a DOI and it has a 50 years plus preservation fund. Also, when I now leave my institution, then it's really cool because OSF is independent of my institution. I use my private account there and I link it to my institutions, um, but I can basically always take my data with me and I can make sure that in, in a few years time, I can still update my data and I can still maintain it um, and I'm not losing access to my, uh, to my work. Um, and the other cool thing is, uh, I found a bug, for example, and this, this happened uh, as well. So what you can do is you can simply update your files in Cloud Store, and then you simply say a new registration, I found a bug, and you simply issue a new registration. This tool goes out again, collects all the data, packages up into a new archive, and provides it. And then people can see that there are different versions of the data, so they can always have access to the first version that was published with the paper, and a revised version that was uh, updated later on with potential uh, data or code fixes. So, that's really cool. And um, now let's, let's look at the last um, application a little bit. Let's push the limits. Um, that was all, I think, fairly straightforward. We just share documents, but now let's share really huge amounts of data and let's break things. Um, so probably many people have, have had the same issue there. Have you ever tried uploading thousands of little files to Cloud Store? Or have you ever tried uploading a 20 gigabyte plus file? Um, it doesn't work that well. So in the browser, for example, uh, two gigabyte is pretty much uh, the, the feasible limit. Then you get timeout errors and you have to be really lucky to upload more than that. Um, also the uncloud client, even that one, uh, I managed to break with files larger than 20 gigabytes. So a little internet corruption or a little internet outage will just lead to, uh, to corrupted files. And it's, it's really difficult to upload really large files from, for example, your home connection. So luckily, there is a fantastic tool there uh, provided by Cloud Store and I called it Rocket. Um, you find it under the client download. It only works for Windows but it uses again the same app passwords, username and token, and then you can just fill them in there. And then you can define a whole directory that you want to upload. So this can contain many files, large files. Um, and then there is um, one important thing. When you use it out of the box with the default settings, it will not be very fast. And the reason is that it's not tweaked uh, correctly to the data you're uploading. So when you're uploading multiple hundred gigabytes of data um, or lots of thousand li little different files, then make sure to go in the configure and upload settings. They have a test where you can say, this is what I roughly would like to upload. Um, and they also have different presets there that uh, you can set, oh, it's my home NBN connection with 20 megabit upstream and 50 megabit downstream. And then you can tweak these settings to make sure it fits to your upload bandwidth and it fits to the data you want to upload. 
And once you do this, you actually get to really, really good speeds and you can transfer huge amounts of data uh, to Cloud Store and in a very reliable way. And since I'm using this, I have no problems with, uh, with corrupted files anymore, which is, uh, was a game changer uh, for me. Okay, now let's look at the last option, high performance computing. So um, um, Christopher asked, is Rocket using WebDev2? That's actually a very good question. Um, I'm assuming it does, but it does it in a way that it's smarter than using, for example, the web browser. But maybe someone from the technical team can explain a little bit more what, what's behind that. Let me take that on notice and I'll get back to you. Hang on a sec. Oh, cool. Okay, yes, I would, yeah, would be keen to, to see. Um, yeah, so my guess would be, yes, it is, and they just do a lot of little tweaks around it because I wouldn't know what else they would use. But it would be quite exciting to hear. Um, cool. So let's, let's look at high-performance computing. So as I said, I'm, I'm using lots of data, and usually a normal computer is not big enough to do this. So we use, for almost everything, high-performance computing systems. The problem is... Interacting with Cloud Store from an HPC is not that straightforward when you initially uh, see this, because the problem is, um, oh yeah, there's another question. Yes, exactly. Are Clone and other tools using WebDev should be uh, as reliable as Rocket? And yes, this is actually my next slide. So I will show how to use R Clone, and R Clone uses WebDev. Yes, so let's, let's look into this. So the problem is on a high-performance computing system, you can't open a browser, you can't install Rocket because it's Windows only, uh, you can't install the OwnCloud client because uh, the OwnCloud client assumes a lot of things that are not available on an HPC. So this all doesn't work, but what are our options now? So there are luckily a few ones, and um, I'll just focus on the first one because uh, that's the first one I tried and it worked and then never changed the running system. So I will show how to interact with R clone um, and how to upload data there. Yes, and also uh, someone said in the chat, uh, R clone is a great option and we have used it a lot. And I completely agree. I think R clone is not just a great tool for Cloud Store, but also if you have other uh, should you use other cloud providers, it's really, really, really useful. Okay, so I'm attempting another demo there. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping this works. So let's, let's look into this. So here I'm connected and I hope the font is, is large enough, but I'm connected to my, uh, to my HPC and I will just go into my scratch directory. And here I have a couple of data files that I would like to upload. Okay. Now the problem is R clone is usually not installed on an HPC. Um, so how do we get it on there? Now let's, Let's try and let's just follow the instructions, right? R clone uh, downloads and uh, let's just fail because they are, they're not that great. So when you try to install R clone, they tell you, well, the easiest thing is you run curl and you pipe that uh, to sudo bash. Not a great idea for multiple reasons. First one, on an HPC, you don't have sudo. Okay, well, let's see if what happens when we take that sudo away, all right? Okay, let's, let's fail. Um, so let's assume we don't have that. Uh, administrator will not like that approach at all. Uh, that's correct, exactly. Administrator uh, will, will hate you for, for, for trying to run sudo and um, also what I'm trying now uh, will not be good because what it will do is it will try to install um, our clone on a local directory. And let's just see what the error is. Well, the error makes a lot of sense. So it's first, it's downloading it to your local uh, drive, which makes sense, that all worked. And then it says, well, I can't copy this file to user bin rclone.new, which makes a lot of sense because this is a shared user system with lots of people on here. And uh, if everyone could do this, this, this uh, HPC would be a mess in a few seconds. So permission denied, and I will never get permission to do this. So, okay, um, let's go to the instructions and let's figure out what we can do. Well, um, there's nothing on there, right? Um, great, okay, so how, how do we solve that problem? Well. There is actually a very uh, simple way. So we can just use, okay, so here we first have to identify on which system we're running, but I would say 90% of people uh, run on Intel AMD 64-bit. So we grab the Linux executable. So again, a DAP or an RPM will not work, uh, and so will not all the other things work. So we need a standard Linux executable. So what I will do is I will copy that link, um, and let's just install that in our home directory. So I go to my home directory, and then I have a tools directory where I install tools that I need. So we can just run a little tool called wget. wget will simply take a file from the internet and download it. 
So let's do this. Um, now we got this file. Now we need to unzip it. So usually unzip is um, installed as well. So we just unzip our clone. And now we have our clone locally in our home directory. So we could just now run our clone and it would actually run. Um, the problem is that we haven't added it to our path. So to add it to our path, what we can do is uh, we can do a little trick and we just add it to our um, bash RC. So we'll quickly, um, quickly show how this works. Um, so this is, this is the little magic command there. So what we will do is we will export the path where we're currently in and we will add this to the bash RC. Um, so I just grab that. And this will, this will pretty much work for, from, uh, from, should work for everyone else as well. Um, so echo, and um, then we do, basically echo will write a string into something else. And what we want to echo is we want to echo path. Then we need to escape the variable path because this we actually want to put in there and not complete. Then we want to use another variable there, which is called uh, PWD, which is the current path where we are in. And this I actually want to get interpreted, so I'm not escaping it. And then I want to add this to my bash RC. Okay, so what this did is it added this line to the end of my bash RC. And now I have export path with my normal path settings and I just appended uh, my tool R clone. And what this now did is that I can go to um, after sourcing the bash RC, I can now go to any directory and I can run R clone and it will be on the path uh, because when we run which R clone, we see it's using my local copy of R clone. And the cool thing of this is I'm also control which version I'm using and um, yeah, no one can, can mess with that. Okay, so let's now configure R clone to run with CloudStore. Okay. So the way to do this is, and the, the instructions look scarier than they are. So that's why I want to quickly show that it's actually not that bad and you only need to set it up once. So what we need to do is we need to run rclone config. rclone config will now ask us a lot of questions um, because it's a very, very flexible tool. And um, what we want to do is we want to create a new remote. Um, and so N. Then we will give it a name. So I'll just give it the name Cloud Store. And um, this name is also case sensitive. So later we will, will we use that to address our storage later. And now it will ask us, which service of these 43 do you want to link? And again, there is a lot of choice. And unfortunately, none of them is Cloud Store. But uh, we already remembered, well, it's based on own cloud, right? So let's try to find own cloud in there. Well, even own cloud is not in there. Well, then we remembered, okay, it's web dev, cool. Let's use web dev, okay? Cool. Now it asks us for a URL. And the URL is, again, the same URL that we used previously for Sotero and for all the other services. It's cloud store arnet at URU plus remote PHP web dev. Then it asks us, well, which type of web dev are you running? Are you running the one from Nextcloud, OwnCloud, or other stuff? Well, we run the web dev of OwnCloud. Okay, um, then it wants a username. Again, the username is what we generated in the security settings here. So in the security settings, um, I will just generate another one. Um, it will be this username. And then it um, asks us, should it generate a random password? And we actually want to type in our own password because we got a token, so yes. And then the password is this token. And then it wants us to confirm the token and uh, the rest we can just ignore. So bearer token, I don't even know what that is. Uh, and I also don't want any advanced config because I thought that was advanced enough. And then it says, well, yes, this is all configured correctly. So we have a storage called cloud store. It uses web dev under this URL with the vendor own cloud with um, a username and an encrypted password. Nice. So then we can just say, yes, that's okay. And we can quit. Okay, that was, that was the hard part. 
Um, and there is a, a comment in the chat that says massive M3 uses Arclone is available as a module. Yes, exactly. So lots of clusters have that available. So you might not have to do the installation step. Um, but yeah, it's uh, always good to know. Okay, so now we can upload data to Cloud Store. So let's try that. Um, so what we can now do is we can do Arclone, copy, and progress will uh, show us what it's doing. Then we can also say how many parallel transfers we want. So I just say I want eight. And then we can say, well, take this data directory that I have here and upload it to Cloud Store. And let's just give it a directory name, um, data from HPC for science article. Okay. So this will now take the data that's in this data directory and it will use WebDev and it will transfer that over to Cloud Store. So let's see if this data lands in our Cloud Store account. Here it is, data from HPC for science article. And now um, this will just get filled uh, with data and it will work really nicely. Um, I will cancel that and we'll show another little thing. Um, there is a wonderful tool from Cloud Store again that wraps around, um, that wraps around our clone. So if you upload lots of data, what can happen is that this can be interrupted, there can be errors. And the tool is called uh, copy to cloud store. So when we go to GitHub, um, let's just grab that link, uh, copy link. So I just want to show that as well. Um, it's a little shell script that you can clone and um, it basically wraps around our clone and it just calls it many times until the data is uploaded. So that's a, a really useful little uh, shell script that you can use if you load, if you upload lots of data. Okay, and of course, just to show, uh, downloading works as well, right? So I can also just say uh, our clone copy uh, progress and I just want to copy from cloud store and let's just see if that works. From Cloud Store, I want to take the directory that I created earlier. Uh, so let's, which one? So rnet talk. Let's see, rnet talk. Um, and oh yes, of course, it wants, uh, it wants us to tell it where it should copy it. So we can just be lazy and say, copy it to here with a dot. And then it will start and it will transfer these files that we had earlier. And then there on our HPC, we can start working, we can push data back out. Okay, um, this is pretty much everything I have prepared for today. So I hope that this was useful to see a little bit, uh, the different examples, and I hope you can extrapolate that to, to your use cases. Um, if anything I tried, um, I showed today, um, and you try it out and you get stuck, uh, just let me know, contact me, um, either on, on, on Twitter or via email, or you can also look on, on our blog, uh, where, uh, where I have lots of these tutorials uh, written up in, in a little bit more detail, so you can uh, see maybe I, um, missed something or showed something uh, different uh, in the talk and you can uh, play with that. And yeah, then I want to thank you for your attention and Arnett, the Arnett team for providing Cloud Store and all these great tools that enable our research and um, for the community and for organizing this webinar to show a little bit of these things and for inviting me to this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefan. That was really great. I learned some stuff there as well.